today we're going to go over the top five best armies that you can be building right now in grand cross age of titans we're going to cover the best heroes for each troop type we're also going to cover the best talents for those heroes and finally we're going to cover which heroes should be your primary and which hero should be your secondary because yes that does matter a ton now this has by far been the most requested guide for grand cross age of titans and i spent a lot of time breaking down all the different heroes their different stats skills and talents to bring this information to you guys so if you enjoy content like this make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it helps push it out into the algorithm so other grand cross age of titans players might see it and consider subscribing to my channel now before we jump in if you haven't tried grand cross age of titans yet i don't know what you're waiting for but the global launch was a couple of weeks ago the game is available for android ios and pc you can download the game for free with my link in the description okay now the first thing that i want to go over is the difference between the primary hero and the secondary hero now if you take a look here we have Jeanette who is the primary hero and the way that you can tell is because she's in front she's on the left and if I tap on her it says primary hero if I tap on my Arthur you'll see that it has me choose a secondary hero and anytime that you send an army out into the world the game will automatically populate a primary and a secondary and you never want to just trust the game's default options you want to build your best armies but what's the difference between having a hero as a primary versus a secondary there's really only two differences between the primary primary hero and the secondary hero the primary hero will bring all of their skills into the battle and they'll also bring all of their talents into the battle whereas the secondary hero only brings their skills into the battle so in the example that I gave before if we have Jeanette primary with Arthur secondary all of the talents that I have in my Arthur none of these will do anything and you can tell that that's the case because at the very top here it says secondary hero talent effects will not apply when troops are deployed to a battle so the only thing that the secondary hero is bringing to the fight are their skills the second difference between the primary hero and the secondary hero is the order in which their active skills will trigger in battle when you're fighting out in the world you're going to see a blue bar to the left of your hero icon that is your mana bar and when that bar is full my Jeanette will pop her active skill and then you'll see a second skill happen afterwards and that is the skill of the secondary hero here it is once again and you see Arthur's face actually pops up right next to my Jeanette one last time there's Jeanette and there's Arthur so you can see that every single time that we trigger the active skills of these heroes it's always going to be Jeanette's skill first and then it's going to be Arthur's skill now this actually matters in the late game when you're fighting other players or much more difficult PVE content because sometimes you may want to order your skills in a specific way so for example if we look at a hero like Helga her active skill says that she deals damage and then the enemy takes 20 percent increased damage for three seconds so if you're going to do a Helga as your primary hero that means that your secondary hero Arthur is going to hit them with his active skill while they have the debuff from the active skill on Helga whereas if you have Arthur as your primary hero he's going to hit them with his skill and it's not going to be hitting them during a debuff and then Helga's going to hit with her attack and then debuff them and they're going to take more damage but you're not going to be dealing any super powerful skills like you would have been with Arthur so in this example you would much rather have Helga primary Arthur secondary but again as I mentioned before it also matters what talents do you want to have in that battle so for example if you have Helga and Arthur you may prefer the talents on Arthur over the talents on Helga and so that's kind of where the strategy comes in with building the best armies possible and that's what we're going to talk about in this video the last thing that I want to mention about primary and secondary heroes is that if I go to send out an army and let's say I choose my Arthur as a primary hero you'll see that I actually can't even pick a secondary and the reason for that is because you unlock the ability for a hero to bring along a secondary at the third star okay if you tap this little question mark here it will tell you what you unlock for each star upgrade 
and three stars is when you unlock the secondary hero for every hero in the entire game so every hero can bring a secondary you just have to make sure that they're three stars or more with all that out of the way let's jump over to the tier maker and this is what we're going to use to organize the different pairs of heroes now if you want access to this tier maker i'm going to put a link in the description below so that way you can sort of plan out the different hero builds that you want to do in grand cross age of titans or if you want to make your own video you can also use the tier maker as well as you can see here we have this broken down by infantry archer cavalry catapults bonus and substitutes okay and the heroes that we're going to be discussing are in the bottom row here and as you might expect Arthur lands himself in the best infantry army but it's not quite that simple because Arthur is a legendary hero after all and some of you might not have him yet but don't worry you will get him eventually you can get him from your advanced summons or you can guaranteed get him from the Arthur grand summon event which comes around a couple of weeks into the opening of your kingdom this game is extremely generous in the early game giving you hundreds hundreds of advanced summons for free so don't worry eventually you will unlock all of the legendary heroes but in case you don't have the legendary hero yet or their skills aren't up to par I'm also going to give you guys some unique heroes that you can substitute in throughout this video so let's see what contenders we have for the infantry army we have Claudia and Arthur obviously we have Calope and Lenek as some unique heroes and right off the bat I'm just going to move Jeanette into the substitute category now the reason for this category is because Jeanette is easily one of the best heroes in the game right now even as a unique because she's very powerful in PvP and open field combat her talent trees are super super good and she does not care what type of unit is in her army meaning you can put her as an infantry hero you could put her as an archer hero a cavalry hero catapults whatever I would recommend having her as a melee unit so probably don't use her with your archers but besides that she really can go anywhere okay so you could keep that in mind you could put her with your infantry army and honestly uh Jeanette with Arthur is insane but for right now we're gonna put her in the substitute category and just know that if you need someone to fill in Jeanette is probably one of the best options for you and the final contender for the best infantry pairing is Corvo but remember we can only pick two of these heroes so which two do you pick well obviously the legendary heroes are going to be a little bit more powerful than the uniques which automatically puts Corvo up above Calope and Lenek because they are uniques at this point you might ask yourself okay well is Claudia better or is Corvo better and honestly I think Claudia is a much better open field PvP hero because she has a three target AoE which means she could deal a total of 1650 active skill damage every time that this pops off if she's hitting three units whereas if you take a look at Corvo he only deals 800 skill damage to a single target so if you're fighting in the open field that means Claudia only has to hit two targets for her to actually out DPS Corvo that's amazing and if you hit the third even better but on top of that she gives you 15 percent extra counter damage 15 percent infantry HP and she gives you 20 percent skill damage 20 percent infantry Titan attack and her awakening skill is absolutely insane she gets 450 mana anytime a skill is used that is an insane amount of mana and that means you're going to be firing off your very powerful active skills a ton if Claudia is awakened in your army whereas if you compare it to Corvo he also gives you 15 percent infantry HP so that's equal across the board but he has a barrier as well as on his awakening skill it's an even more powerful barrier and he has a healing factor so in general Claudia is going to be dealing way more damage out in the world whereas Corvo is a bit more tanky and I think Corvo has a really unique place as one of the best station heroes with Erdell in the entire game right now but for open field fighting I think Claudia easily takes the cake as a much better hero and also Claudia is a hero that you can get absolutely for free at the very beginning of the game you're going to be able to get enough mana stones of her to max out her active skill which is huge this is the most powerful skill on Claudia and you get it for free so this is very free to play friendly and I honestly think it's better than Corvo in the open field with that being said I'm going to move Corvo down here and let's take a look at our remaining three now obviously if you have Arthur and Claudia that's the way to go with Arthur as your primary hero and the reason for that is because Claudia has the infantry and the hunt talents whereas Arthur has the infantry and attack talents and as you guys know the hunt talents are only for defeating monsters out in the world meaning a lot of the talents in the hunt tree do nothing when you're doing open field PvP whereas 
the attack tree is super powerful for pvp and also gives you really nice bonuses for fighting in pve as well so overall the attack tree is probably the most powerful talent tree in the entire game right now so if you are ever questioning what talent tree should i go for well if the hero in question has the attack tree that's probably where you want to start if you don't have claudia yet or you don't have enough skills in her to make her usable then you can replace her with either calipi or lenek and the difference here is that well first of all calipi is sort of like a unique version of corvo she deals way less damage than corvo but she does give you a nice chunk of a bunch of different stats also she gives you a really nice barrier and she has the defense talent tree so if you want to use calipi you can use her as primary to arthur because a it's going to take less experience to level up a unique hero to max level than it will for a legendary hero at max level and b you could choose this configuration if you want a more tanky option if you do arthur primary you'll deal more damage so keep that in mind by flipping this around you could do tanky or you could do damage that's a nice way to go if you want a mixture of tank and damage you could do this if you want all damage you could do this you would never do Lenek primary because she has the hunt talent tree so if you do all damage you would go with this now the real question is when do you replace a unique hero with Claudia or Corvo if you got really lucky from your summons and you got a ton of mana stones from him I would say you could substitute your unique hero with Claudia once you get her fourth skill to five points I'll move myself over here but you could see that the fourth skill on Claudia is really good she gives you 20 percent increased skill damage and remember that's going to increase the damage on her active skill but also because she's the secondary all her skills work for the primary as well so that means the active skill on Arthur which is one of the best things about him is going to also deal 20 percent increased skill damage so that's huge in my mind I think her active skill is the best then the fourth skill then the second skill and then the third skill that's the order with which I would invest in them I would say once you get two of these skills to five then you could sub her in for your unique and that makes a lot of sense to me when it comes to the best talent for your infantry heroes i'm going to say that you're probably going to be using arthur as your primary and my Arthur's only at level 10 so i'm going to use my Jeanette as an example because she also has the attack tree and here you can see exactly what i've invested in okay first of all the first three rows of every single talent tree are pretty much identical so i would always choose the troop attack because you have to then i would choose the troop defense which i messed up here and then i would choose the march speed march speed is very very important for pvp you can see once again i messed it up on the bottom here because i built this talent tree a few weeks ago and i wasn't entirely aware of what i was doing but i would personally always choose defense over health because if you come into your uh your units here you're gonna find that for infantry archers cavalry and combat engineers all of them have lower defense than hp defense is the amount of damage that you can resist taking from your enemy and hp is the amount of damage you can take before your units actually get slightly wounded or sent to the hospital or die if your hospital is full and since you're always going to have less defense than hp you might want to supplement it by getting the defense talents in the talent trees as you go through the attack tree i would recommend grabbing composure this gives you nine percent troop skill damage then you want to grab mana absorption this gives you 30 extra mana every single turn which is huge then i would grab the march speed here once again then i would grab boost morale which increases skill damage by nine percent for three seconds after using a skill which means whoever the secondary hero is is gonna have a nine percent increase in their skill damage very very good stuff there love to see that then i would probably grab damage reduction here because it decreases damage from basic attacks by six percent uh you're gonna take way more basic attacks than you will skill attacks and yes skill damage is much higher than basic attack damage but you're probably going to take like 15 or 20 basic attacks for every one skill shot that you take and so i think personally it's probably better to grab this then i would come over here and i would grab mana retrieval this gives you 150 mana after casting a skill that is unbelievable that is very very good this means you're going to cast your next active skill even sooner which is very powerful then i would grab additional attack here it's a very small chance of dealing an additional basic attack but sometimes you have skills or talents that trigger on basic attack so this would give you an additional chance for that to trigger and also your basic attacks are where you gain mana so 
dealing another attack if you actually have it happen it's only a three percent chance but if you do have it happen you could gain a little bit extra mana for that turn as well and then finally I would grab mana efficiency reducing the mana cost of skills by 210 so overall you're going to be casting your active skills very fast with the attack tree and then the last point goes into composure which increases damage dealt to enemy troops by 10 percent for a single point that is unbelievable how much value you get out of that then as you can see i went back and i grabbed pretty much every other talent here that wasn't raw stats okay so you could skip like this you can skip this you can skip the uh, raw stats over here but you can see that I did come back and I grabbed damage over time. I also came and grabbed damage amplification, which increases basic attack damage. I grabbed more March speed. I also grabbed reduced skill damage taken as well. So a lot of these, you know, you have to choose one or the other to progress. But then once you max out this tree, you could go back and pick the ones that you missed, which is exactly what I did. Uh, damage amplification here is insane, by the way. 9% more basic attack damage compared to this one. It only gives you 1.2. Okay. So for the same three points, you get nine versus 1.2. Now I grabbed both, but this one clearly takes priority. And then jumping back over to Arthur, once you've finished putting all your points in your attack tree, you could just put the rest into the infantry tree. Ultimately, you're going to be using Arthur with Claudia. So I'm going to move the other two unique heroes down here, and you could use this as a second infantry army if you want to. Next, let's move on to the archers. If you've watched my other guide videos, I talk about how I think Melaby is easily one of the best heroes in the entire game right now, alongside Heimosu and Alicia. And finally, we also have karma who is a free legendary that you get every single week by doing your demon extermination and then coming down to the shop here okay so if you guys didn't notice this you want to be getting all of the karma mana stones you can every single week she is a free legendary again we're talking about another free legendary okay if you couldn't tell already this game has been really free to play friendly so far now before we move on I want to talk about Alicia for one second because she is undoubtedly one of the most powerful heroes in the entire game and I think you could easily make the case that she might actually be the most powerful hero in the entire game now she does happen to be an archer hero but here's the thing if you put her as a secondary remember her talents do nothing only her skills and if you look at her skills nothing on her kit is archer specific she deals 1000 damage to a single target with a really powerful ranged march speed reduction she also gives you 30 percent increased basic attack damage she also brings 20 percent more troops to the battlefield she gives you a 10 percent chance to gain 250 mana when attacking and there's no listed cooldown here and finally her awakening skill inflicts 300 of attack if the enemy target has a decreased marching speed which guess what she's gonna do that every time her skill pops which is insane there's also other heroes in the game that have the support talent tree like melaby and there is a talent here that will decrease the enemy march speed so anytime this talent triggers you're also going to deal 300 damage with your alicia as well as the secondary if she is awakened but none of this here specifies that she needs to be in an archer army you could literally put her as a secondary hero anywhere in your lineup and she's going to perform extremely well now i will say you probably still want to use her with archers because she can attack at range with this skill which is actually insane march speed debuffs at range are just wild okay but the biggest downside with alicia is that most of you are not going to get her including myself she was only available at the time of recording this through the undefeatable event which is an event where you're going to compete with everybody in your kingdom to get the most amount of points and the odds are that there are going to be some super powerful players who are putting it all on the line to get the most amount of points possible in her events and if you don't come in the top few places you are just not going to get any of her mana stones and you need at least 10 of them to summon her so if you don't come in the top few ranks of this event then you're just never going to get her so most of you watching probably won't get her which is really unfortunate now as I mentioned before there are lots of legendary heroes that you get free to play and there's even more that we haven't talked about okay which is kind of wild so you don't need Alicia and I just want to say that if you're going to build a single Archer army and you can get Alicia then alicia primary melody secondary is probably the way to go okay uh that is probably how how you want to do things okay this is probably the best archer army for the open field in the game however most of you aren't going to get alicia so 
keep in mind if you can get her this is the best pair but I'm gonna bring her down next to Corvo because again most of you just aren't going to get her so in that case what do you do well you have Heimosu and you have Karma left and which of these do you pair with your Melaby well for most of you I would say you probably want to pair your Heimosu and you want to have her as the secondary hero now eventually as you get more mana stones of your Karma you will be able to get her up to a level where she can get awakened and she will definitely be more powerful than your Heimosu but Heimosu in my opinion is one of the best open field heroes in the entire game even as a unique she's probably only second place to Jeanette honestly because of what she can do three targets circular AoE around the target and makes them take 20 percent increased damage for three seconds absolutely insane debuff for a unique hero and the synergy here with Melaby is insane because if you take a look here she has a 15 percent chance of dealing an additional basic attack on the same turn but if you awaken her that bumps it up to 20 and great news if you look at Melaby she also has up to 20 percent chance of dealing an additional basic attack on the same turn so that means these two combined have a 40 percent chance of dealing double damage every single turn there's no cooldown here and after Melaby uses her active skill you're gonna get 50 percent increased basic attack damage so not only do you have a 40 percent chance of doing double basic attacks if it occurs during this five seconds it's gonna be 50 percent bonus double attacks it's an insane combo considering especially this is a unique hero and we're attacking at ranged okay so you're not even going to be on the front line you're probably pretty safe in the back row attacking with this combination it's absolutely wild this is easily one of the best open field armies in the game right now and the best part is that you can basically completely ignore the final skill on Heimosu for a very long time because it doesn't do anything out in the world it's only for stationing so if you have her at five 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 one you've gotten probably 95 percent of the value out of her and eventually you can come back to grab the awakening skill but you really don't have to 5551 is just it's fine you could just leave her there she's great now the reason that you would want to do Melody primary is because of the support tree the support tree out in the world is much better than the station tree because obviously if you're fighting out in the world you're not stationing okay stationing is when you are the leader of a watchtower and you're defending that watchtower against a, a an attacker or you're defending your city against an attacker okay uh so in open world fights this talent tree is horrible so Heimosu primary is definitely a no-go but Melaby primary has the support tree so what talents do you grab you probably want to go to the end of the archer tree because this gives you 10 percent more basic attack damage and remember that combination is going to be popping off double basic attacks very very often so this is a very valuable talent for you and it's pretty easy to remember how to get there because I'm going to recommend grabbing everything in the top row that's pretty much it you grab attack you grab defense you grab troop march speed okay that's the only exception here and you go attack for the top row and grab everything on the top row here except for again March speed I would always take March speed over over stats then you grab attack attack and here now once you are able to put points into the support tree you can go ahead and do that you would grab attack defense and March speed once again unfortunately these two talents are trash and you're probably going to use neither of them but if you can I would grab bind down here then you would grab troop attack and then at this point I'm not sure how far into the support tree you can even go and max level you might not have enough points to go very far next we can go over cavalry and I think cavalry is a fan favorite for these types of games I think a lot of players love to go cavalry because they typically move faster out in the world and people really like that but as you might have noticed so far we've gotten one free to play legendary for infantry one free to play legendary for archers and there's really no free to play friendly hero for cavalry at least at least not that I've seen so far in the story mode but there are a few really good cavalry heroes that we can talk about first of all there's Isaac Isaac is insane he is easily one of the best heroes in the game right now but we also have Bella who is a unique hero we have Agnes who is also legendary and we have Numa who is also legendary so what configuration should you build with these four well first of all you might be asking what about Sekhmet or what about Valkyrie or what about Galahad these are fan favorite heroes right the problem with them is that they're actually not very good at PvP if you look at Valkyrie she has the hunt talent tree and one of her skills is completely dedicated to fighting monsters which means an entire skill that means 25 percent of her skills 
do nothing in pvp so she's actually not great for pvp and if you look at galahad she's like the face of the app like if you download the app on the app store this is who you see and you would expect her to be really good and she is extremely good at one thing and one thing only and that is killing enemy farmers that is literally it if you want to kill enemy farmers galahad is hands down the best hero in the game to do that but besides that she's actually really not good okay and Sekhmet is a hero that you have to spend real money for and also she suffers from the same problem as Valkyrie and that is that her one of her skills does absolutely nothing in PvP and the rest of her kit is not strong enough to make up for it and also you have to pay for her so a lot of you guys might not even have Sekhmet as an option and that's why Cavalry is just not in a great spot now one thing that I will say is there is a unique combo that has the potential to be extremely overpowered with an Agnes primary hero and Numa secondary hero. The reason that I say potentially is because in order to test this, we really need to get an awakened Agnes. Okay. And that costs hundreds and hundreds of legendary mana stones. Most players do not have that yet in any kingdom throughout the entire game right now. So we really can't get a good testing, but the synergy of the skills and talents on Agnes primary Numa secondary are insane. This is a massive damage over time or dot army. And if that's your play style, or if you just like these heroes, then Agnes with Numa is the way to go. But because the investment in both of these heroes is so high meaning in order to do this you need the awakening skill on Agnes basically or at least to get it at maximum effectiveness uh, most of you are not going to have the mana stones to invest in this army if you do great it's probably going to be super powerful we haven't been able to test it yet but it should be really good but it's probably not in the cards for most of you so while this would be a great pair all on its own we're going to move the damage over time team down here and that really only leaves us with two heroes we have Isaac and we have Bella and great news they're actually pretty solid and you can get Isaac for free from doing your summons Isaac is a giga Chad on the front lines okay he deals an insane amount of damage and he increases all damage from his army by 15 percent for three seconds that's basic attack damage counter damage skill damage all damage very very good stuff he also gives you 20 percent defense which is huge a lot of the heroes we've talked about so far have only given you 15 percent of HP right this gives you a arguably a better stat and more of it then he gives you 15 percent more damage for pincer attacks and 15 percent less damage taken from pincer attacks so a pincer attack is when you have multiple armies hitting the same target that is a pincer attack you are surrounding that target and if you're being surrounded you're taking less damage which makes him perfect for the front lines literally this is the perfect skill and not only that but he deals 20 percent more counter damage which means if he is being pincered attacked not only is he taking 15 percent less damage he's dealing 20 percent more counter damage back to them so he really really punishes enemies for hitting him he basically is like got a shield of spikes okay he's very tanky he's got the defense tree and he's gonna really hurt you if you try to swarm him down so definitely try not to hit Isaac in the open field okay and then finally his awakening skill he has a 25 percent chance to decrease basic attack damage taken by 70 percent for one turn and as a three second cooldown so really really tanky hero here very good for the frontline fighting and he it's obvious why he lands in the best cavalry army in Grand Cross Age of Titans when it comes to his talent trees you have two different routes that you can go first of all if you want to deal maximum damage you would go for the cavalry tree if you want to be as tanky as possible you would go for the defense tree and personally I would probably recommend going on the defense tree because the final talent here decreases all damage taken by 10 percent that is absolutely insane he's going to be really hard to take down and like I said he's going to be really punishing if the enemy tries to do so once again I would grab troop attack troop defense and then I would grab March speed then I would reduce damage taken by nine percent that is way better than nine percent HP then I would grab significant damage reduction this reduces the pincer attack damage taken by six percent then I would grab the troop attack then I would grab vengeance here because when you have 70 percent or higher you increase your counter damage even further by nine percent okay so for the first 30% of your army's health, 
you're going to be dealing 20 percent counter damage on his fourth skill and nine percent so 29 percent total here which is insane then i would get the decreased damage from basic attacks by six percent then i would grab vengeance again for another six percent counter damage this is for melee attacks only but still that's uh, insane that's 35 percent counter damage to melee units which is wild then i would grab significant mana amplification so if you're being pincer attacked you're actually going to gain 60 mana every single turn which means you're really going to punish the enemies for swarming you not only are you going to be dealing massive damage back and you're super tanky while you're doing it but now your mana is regenerating so fast that you're going to pop your active skills even more and remember when his active skill goes off he increases his damage by 15 percent so overall i mean this talent is very very good do not sleep on this then i would grab dignity here for six percent bonus attack at 90 percent or higher the reason that this is much better than crisis management is because every single fight that you get into you will have 90 percent or higher units for some duration of the fight but there's going to be a lot of battles in the open field where you never reach 30 percent before retreating okay so a lot of times you are never going to use crisis management whereas every battle you will use dignity and then you grab combined damage reduction the rest of your points you can go ahead and put them in the cavalry tree you grab attack you grab defense you grab march speed you would grab the affinity damage here then you would grab attack you would also grab basic attack damage and then at that point i don't know how far into the cavalry tree you can even go of course the mana per turn here is very good decreasing enemy defense is very good here as well grabbing the march speed is a no-brainer then you would grab cav attack cav attack and the final point but again you're not going to make it through the end of this talent tree if you make it to the end of the defense tree and vice versa there's just not enough talent points to build both talent trees most of you should definitely focus on the defense tree for sure next let's talk about your catapult army now this is a mid to late game army you definitely don't want to focus on this in the early game because you don't even get catapults until you get tier four units and then you have to research the technology to unlock the special tier four units for your combat engineers and that is catapults now I talked about catapults in my tier list video and I also mentioned it probably multiple times in other videos but catapults have the highest range in the game and they only have slightly less attack than archers so they are super good at attacking at a distance and there's really only like one good pair that I can recommend here maybe two depending on how lucky you are and that's obviously Freya because Freya is the only catapult hero in the game right now I believe and finally you would either pair them with Ivan or if you did get Alicia you could pair with Alicia as well but really I think Freya and Ivan are like a match made in heaven here and let me explain why Freya deals 700 percent damage to five enemy targets at the longest range in the game mind you because they have catapults and it decreases their HP by 15 percent for three seconds so massive AoE damage massive range which means you're safe and massive troop debuff that is one of the best active skills in the entire game if you thought that this was a very innocent cute little song girl you are mistaken she will absolutely obliterate you and you don't even know where she'll be on the map because she'll be so far away she also decreases increases all damage taken by 15 percent for 70 percent or higher which is very nice she also gives you 25 percent combat engineer defense and 25 percent combat engineer hp but she gives you 40 percent of attack for catapults and remember attack is the stat that scales your active skill damage okay so the more attack you have the more skill damage you're going to deal so 40 percent guys we have not seen that level of stat bonus in this entire video we've seen 15 percent hp 20 percent defense this gives you 40 percent attack absolutely insane fourth skill decreases counter attack damage taken by 15 percent amazing she needs the tankiness and finally you have a 20 percent chance to heal lightly wounded units by 200 percent of attack this is a very small heal it's not anything crazy but the fact that you can heal at range is nice and guess what attack tree the attack tree strikes once again this is the best tree in the entire game now we already talked about the attack tree earlier in the video so i'm not going to go over it once again but you absolutely want to go all in on the attack tree everything in this tree is super super good for dealing massive skill damage and attacking at range and really the combat engineer tree is just not good okay it's it's just not good do you want to deal five percent increased damage or do you want to deal ten percent increased damage for the exact same cost i think it's it's obvious right you go all on all in on the attack tree and you are golden with freya and the reason that ivan is such a good pairing here is because ivan also has a five target 
circular aoe that attacks ranged that means you're gonna hit them this the same five targets that you absolutely just nuked out of orbit with freya you're gonna follow up that with a second slightly smaller nuke but remember because i've been secondary they're gonna have an hp debuff by the time that his skill hits absolutely insane here okay absolutely insane he also increases troop skill damage by 20 percent so that 700 skill damage on freya bumped up by 20 percent this army is absolutely launching missiles at range it's crazy now the third skill unfortunately for ivan does not do anything out in the open world and then he gives you 15 percent increased attack which remember all the skill damage of the game scales off of attack so that means this army is going to have a total of 55 percent bonus attack between freya and ivan ridiculous finally you have a 10 percent chance to restore 300 mana which means this combination is going to pop off your active skills over and over and over again it's like you are machine gunning out tactical nukes at range it's actually wild this is an insanely good combination but remember the one thing and the biggest downside with this combination is that yes you're hitting at ranged but you are a glass cannon you are an absolute glass cannon you have very few stats that will protect you at all yes you take less counter damage but besides that everything on this kit is attack and skill damage and you will absolutely demolish but you will pay a heavy cost if you are actually caught luckily like i said catapults are the highest range possible which is why ivan is so good here if you use ivan for a melee build he's a glass cannon up on the front line you don't want that so that's why i think ivan is so powerful with freya and absolutely part of the best catapult build that you can build right now but again this is definitely a mid to late game investment and i you know they're obviously both um legendary heroes so it's gonna be hard for you to get some investment in both of these anyway so i would say focus on these top three first and then catapults much later now finally we have to talk about your fifth army right uh what happens then what do you do for your fifth army well at this point you could decide you know who, what what does your account look like okay do you have an excess of infantry heroes do you have an excess of archer heroes what do you want to build do you prefer being cavalry focused do you prefer being infantry focused it's up to you uh, i would say it's you're safe to build two of any troop type besides catapults because there's really only one catapult hero at the time of recording this and whoever you decide to build you could throw in uh jeanette as the secondary now you can see here that we haven't talked about helga yet okay uh and helga is just like jeanette in that she is a damage amplifier she deals aoe and she doesn't care what troop type she uses okay you can literally run this combination right here with anything you could put any troops here you could put your leftover infantry your leftover cavalry whatever you want this is going to deal massive amounts of damage helga has a massive aoe skill shot but also the debuff here is insane those targets take 20 percent increased damage so any of your armies hitting that target this debuff is insane and you absolutely want to get her on the battlefield and great news i mentioned this earlier you get helga for free by going through and getting the tower of moonlight you unlock her through the story missions over here i've already completed it so i can't show you but if you haven't summoned helga by the time you get there you will get at least one copy of her absolutely for free and then at that point you can invest your mana stones in her if you really want to but she deals 10 percent increased counter damage she has a 50 percent chance of doing an instant proc 250 skill damage when she is dealing a skill shot which is crazy she gives you 50 percent hp and she has a five percent chance to become immune to all disruption effects for 10 seconds when using basic attacks she's got relatively low stats here i would say in general but remember none of this cares about your troop type and nothing on Jeanette's kit cares about troop type either so both of them are universal aoe skill damage machines Jeanette has a built-in rage engine here which is insane there's a really nice debuff on helga and you really can just slap any units you want in this army and it will perform really really well the skill damage for both of these heroes is melee range so even though they're universal typically you don't want to put them into an archer army but if you wanted you could flex them out into a second infantry army or a second cavalry army so for example if you wanted to do two infantry armies you could put Jeanette with Arthur and you could do Claudia with Helga and now you have two heroes that are super good in the open field with infantry 
now of course downside with claudia primary is she has the hunt tree so you would have to go all in on the infantry tree you could do helga primary if you wanted to but then that kind of defeats the purpose right as a matter of fact i actually would probably prefer something like this if you wanted to do two infantry armies right or if you wanted to do two cavalry armies you could do something like this where you do isaac with helga and then bella with Jeanette or you could split up your legendaries if you wanted to do that as well that's something that you can consider and now you have two cavalry armies but really it's up to you how you split up these last two heroes that I wanted to talk about or once again you could just dump all your leftover stuff into them and you're good to go now I just want to end this video by giving you guys some advice as to where you should spend your legendary mana stones because these are some of the rarest items in the entire game and they come in two forms at the time of recording this first there's a season one mana stone and second there is a universal legendary mana stone this is extremely rare and you should absolutely hold on to as many of these as you can and here's why the existence of a season one legendary mana stone implies the existence of a season two legendary mana stone and a season three legendary mana stone and so on and so forth i don't know how seasons work in this game yet because it's so new we don't know how far away season two is i suspect it will come after your first kingdom versus kingdom which we still don't have a timeline on that but if we do see that here in my server soon surely I will cover it for a video but the important thing here is that I suspect season two heroes will be even more powerful than season one heroes and your legendary mana stones can be used anywhere you can use them season one or you could use them season two on something even more powerful so do not waste too many of these on your season one heroes and not only that but season one heroes are the only heroes in your actual summons here okay so you're gonna move on to season two and do you think they're gonna add season two heroes to advance summon they might that's totally possible or they could just leave it the same and if that's the case then that means you are spending some of your most rare items in the entire game on a hero that you will continuously get for free over time as you play the game and that is such a waste of legendary mana stones okay so for season one obviously you can only ever use them for season one so use them wherever you see fit but the legendary mana stones please hold on to as many of these as possible and do not waste them on your season one legendaries i really think that you're gonna have a much better investment later down the line so please save them if you want my recommendation on where you could potentially use some of them then i would say first of all melaby is a great option Arthur is also a great option if you uh, go all in on Freya Freya is a great option as well and finally uh, I would say Isaac or Alicia those are like the only ones that I would say that you should use maybe some legendary mana stones on but in no circumstance would I ever recommend awakening any of the season one heroes except for maybe Alicia by using legendary mana stones save them please save them only use your season ones and only use the legendary ones if you can just get one extra skill point out of it one extra investment one extra little thing before you go into war maybe then you can consider it but for most of you i would say save a majority of your legendary mana stones for those moments where you really need it war is about to break out and you're about to go to battle until then save them see what comes down the pipeline see what heroes come next and i think you'll probably come back to this video in six to twelve months and he'll probably thank me for it anyway guys this video has been way longer than i thought it would and if you enjoyed it make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other grand cross age of titans players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a grand cross age of titans video comment down below your favorite hero pairs i would love to hear from you guys down there are there some pairs that i didn't think about i would love to hear from you and finally i want to thank the generous sponsor of this video which is none other than grand cross age of titans itself i've been enjoying the game an absolute ton so it has been so nice working with them and having them be the sponsor of these videos for the channel if you made it to the end of this video and you haven't tried the game yet you should absolutely give it a try click the link in the description below to download it absolutely for free for android ios or pc anywhere in the world with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace